Hey everybody, welcome to today's stream. Hope everybody's doing good today. So we are gonna be casting some more pasta, Ocean Adventure Creatures pasta. And this was sent in by Anne. So big thank you to Anne for sending this in. She sent a ton of pasta. And I was looking at what we had over on the shelf and I was like, uh, I don't really think I wanna do like all the pastas in one shot. So I just kind of chose uh, the Ocean Adventures one. I thought that'd be kind of fun today. So uh, that's what we're gonna be casting. I'm gonna switch to the overhead so you guys can see a little better. It's kind of cool. They have little, uh, there's like a boat. Let me make sure I'm on the right camera, okay. Uh, a, a shark, a seahorse, and I really like the octopus. So I think there's four, I, I don't know if there's any other shapes. So these were the four that I could see. Uh, but we got a whole box of these things, so it should be pretty fun to uh, cast them and see what we can make. Um, I saw you guys were kind of talking a little bit, like what, wondering what, what are we going to see out of these. And, and for turning blanks, we're going to turn into them. And so, you know, some of the, the actual, you know, like being able to see the octopus is probably not going to be likely, definitely not in pen blanks. Um, so we're going to do one batch of those. Um, the, the cool thing about this is though, so you won't necessarily on some of these things be able to, to really identify the pieces. However, they're so intricate that I think that we're going to get really awesome shapes either way. So it's not so much like, oh, you know, we're not going to be able to see it. Um, I think that, uh, like, I don't think it's going to be super disappointing, I, I should say, for, for the things that we're going to turn. Um, now, for other things though, um, I think if you really want to keep, you know, be able to see the little shapes, then you're probably gonna wanna do something where you're not gonna turn it or cut it or do anything like that. Um, like, uh, I'm trying to think of something, I'm trying to think of like a really good example. Um, like you could embed these in like, uh, like a charcuterie board or like, you know, in a resin river table or something like that, or I don't know, all kinds of stuff. Anything that you get a mold of, um, you can just put these guys in there if it's something where you're actually just gonna take it out of the mold, finished. Like it's, there's no messing around, maybe polish it, but, but you're not really cutting or turning or you know, machining it. That's gonna leave you the best view of the little shapes. So I thought we'd do a couple different things today. So I, I wanted to do some pen blanks. I think it'd be kind of interesting to see. I wanna, I wanna see how they turn out you know, and see what, we, what, kinda, what look they have. So we'll do some of those. I was thinking it might not be a bad idea to do something like stoppers or like a handle. Um, that's a case where you're not turning it down so thin that you won't see anything. Um, you know, with a stopper or, or a handle, something that's like one and a half or two inches in diameter, the outsides may be kind of obscured. You're gonna cut some of these pieces off, but you should be able to see some of them in there, I would think. So I thought we would do some, let's just do like a, a, a stopper handle. And I think we might be able to double down. Um, for the, well, let's see here. I'm, I'm just trying to think. I didn't really put a whole lot of planning into this. Um, for the pen blanks, I think it'd be cool to do a lot of colors because I don't think we're, we're not going to be able to see the shapes. So we may as well go for colors. For the stoppers, I think we should probably just do, you know, some sort of a transparent type of resin. Um, you know, the, the first thing that comes to mind is, is transparent, you know, like the ocean blue dye. Um, where it's going to be completely, it's like, you know, uh, the, like the stained glass effect. It's going to be tinted, but it's, there's, there's not any opacity. It's not going to obscure the view. So I think that would be pretty cool. Obviously, that, like I said, blue is kind of my first thought, but we could do all kinds of different stuff. Um, so we'll do one of those. And then, because I was saying it would make a lot more sense for this, if you want to keep the shapes and be able to really, you know, enjoy the shape of the pasta, we got to do something where we're just going to pull it out of the mold and it's done. So um, I have been holding on to this pyramid mold. I bought this a while ago and I never actually got around to doing anything with it. And I was thinking, why don't we make a pyramid oceanscape? Um, so it should be kind of fun to see how this turns out. This is one of those things where you're going to just pull it out of there and it's done. Like you're not messing around. You might, again, like I said, light sanding and maybe some polishing or something like that. But um, I think you also, I, I think you should be able to just take it out and be like done, you know, that's it. So we're gonna have a little bit of fun with this. What I was thinking for the, let's see here, uh, for the pyramid, the way this is gonna work, we're gonna cast this thing, you know, it's basically, it's upside down. So when you take it out, you know, whatever you, you poured first is gonna be at the top. And so what I was thinking is we could get away with doing a multi-stage pour on this. Um, I'm thinking that 
the base would be cooler to have like the little oceany animals and stuff. Um, but we can put something on the, the tip, basically, something different. So um, I think we're going to start with that first because we need to get that poured and then in the pressure pot. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use Alumalite Clear Slow. Um, I'm going to pour enough to where we can take it out in about 30 minutes. Um, you can kind of get away with that. I don't really recommend doing that with uh, Alumalite Clear Slow. Um, you're best, you know, leaving it in the pressure pot for, you know, two or three hours, something like that. But I have done some tests and, and pouring like a like half of a, um, actually it was even smaller than that. It was a cup. Let's see here. I think I got some, maybe. Uh, yeah, yeah, I think, uh, yeah, these ones. I think these are two ounce cups. And I was, uh, if for some people that have been kind of around for a while, um, I was trying to suspend dice in the middle of this. And so I was only pouring about half of this and I could pull it in about 30 minutes with Illumilite Clear Slow. So I think that we should be able to, to do something kind of fun on the top here. You know, maybe come in about, try and get the, <laughs> let me get the screen here. I don't know, pour, you know, like up to about here, maybe something like that. It'd be about, you know, two or three ounces of resin, something like that. Um, and then put it in the pressure pot, let it, you know, harden up and then pull it out and then we'll do, you know, like the pasta and everything. So the question is, what are we gonna cap it with? That's, I don't, I didn't really get that far with my thinking. I just thought it'd be kind of fun to put something in the bottom. So uh, why don't you guys toss out some ideas because I literally, my brain is, is like fried. So if you guys have ideas, I'll look through the chat and see what you guys come up with. Um, you know, part of me thinks it'd be kind of cool to put like a, an opaque thing at the top but at the same time, I'm also kind of like, that'll obscure the view a little bit. So, I don't know. Throw out some ideas if you guys got any. And while, while you guys are um, doing that, um, I will see who is here. I, I know that, uh, let's see, wow, it's, that's gone for a while. Jay Campbell is here first, and then Carl, and then Doug and Billy. How's it going, guys? Gene and Ann's here. Uh, again, thank you for sending in all that pasta. It was awesome. And Stace, did I say Stace? Stace is here. Who else? Frank's here. And Jim Myers. Lots of people. David Eisenhower. And Jim Conlon's here. Nice. And Dominic's here. Dominic's usually first. He was late. I'm gonna I'm gonna say that you were late today. <laughs> Steve Coombs. Nice. Awesome. Lots of people. Let me scroll down. I think there was a couple questions here. So uh super incognitos here we're going to be casting some ocean adventures pasta there's little sharks and and seahorses and boats and octopuses and all kinds of stuff did i miss i think i might have missed one there's a seahorse too a seahorse in there um i don't know if i said that before and octopuses and boats and sharks pretty fun so we're going to be having a little bit of fun with that let's see here Sand colored resin. Yeah, that's that that would be a good one. I like that. I don't have a link offhand to this thing. I can get one. Hold on a minute. Uh hold tight. I can go get my link. We just I gotta look up my order. Got it on Amazon. Um one thing about the pyramid mold that I've heard, so the way this thing works basically just a silicone floppy thing with a form right and so what i've heard is if you stick this thing down in here after you pour the resin in especially i think i would say especially if you pour like the full thing one of the nice things about this pyramid mold that it may not be the first thing that you've thought of you don't have to fill the whole thing you're still going to get a pyramid even if you poured half the resin so um, a lot of people look at this and go, oh my gosh, that's going to be a lot of resin, which frankly, I have no clue how much resin this is going to be. Um, but um, you don't have to do the whole thing. You could make little tiny pyramids if you wanted. Um, and so just want to kind of mention that. It, it, it's kind of an interesting, interesting deal. Uh, so let me get a, I got a link here. Hold on. Get, here's a link. It's an affiliate link uh again on amazon and it was pretty cheap how much was this thing well it was a little bit more expensive than i thought but 20 24 bucks the price may fluctuate because i think it might have been cheaper when i bought it but 
I don't know. It's whatever. There's tons of different ones on, on Amazon too. So there we go. Let's see here. Let me scroll down. Sand color. So I was thinking that the aqua color for the, you know, we would, we would make the, the, where the pastas are, we would make that aqua. Um, that seems like kind of the smart idea. I don't think I have any shells, fortunately. All right, so let's try to do, um, I don't want to, the top thing is just going to be like kind of a cap. Um, I don't want to try and suspend things or do any of that kind of stuff in the top. Um, one thing to keep in mind, if you are going to do that, it is upside down. So you, you would need to invert, <laughs> you know, whatever you, it can get a little bit confusing, I think. Um, anyway, so let me go back to what I was saying. So what, I, what I've heard is if you pour the whole thing in here, um, I, I guess I kind of totally went, went on, off the rails on that. Um, it's really hard to get this thing out of here. And I mean, it's not even super simple to get this, you know, like if you pull it, it sticks kind of. So I think if I remember correctly, and I am no expert at this type of casting stuff. I've never poured anything. I've never used this thing before ever, but I believe what I heard is that to keep that thing from sticking, is to pour a little bit of uh, baby powder, talcum powder, something like that, kind of on the inside between the, the silicone jobber and the plastic. Um, I believe that should work. You might even be able to get away with using something like a, a mold release or something like that, or, or wax, um, you know, something to kind of reduce that friction, basically. So that's what we're gonna, we're gonna try the baby powder idea um, first. I'm gonna go over here and blow this thing out. It, it had been sitting out for a while, so there's some dust in here. We don't want dust. We don't want no dusty molds. And get all the junk out of here. Looking pretty good, I think. All right, so I'm gonna to switch to the working work view. So we're gonna, like I said, we're gonna do this first. I kind of like the idea of doing like a, a kind of a sand color. Um, trying to think how we could make, if we can do anything spectacular. I don't think I wanna make this over, overly complicated. Let's try. Hmm. I don't really know if this is gonna work, <laughs> I'm gonna be honest. But I was thinking maybe we could mix up a little bit of yellow and brown mica powder and try, try and see if we can get like a tan color out of that. I don't know, the other way to go is I do have some dye that's already tan. Um, and if, if this doesn't really work, I can add some dyes in and try and kind of you know figure that out. But first things, let's, let's get this baby powder on this thing. I'm just gonna use that camera. We're gonna blow this off too, it's all dusty. Um, baby powder can be used uh, for, for a lot of different things. I, I've seen, the reason I have baby powder in here is I actually got this tip from um, Punished Props. And they actually put baby powder in the mold. Um, you know, like when they're doing, um, you know, prop, you know, they're doing a copy of something. Um, I guess the camera's over here. <laughs> um, they'll, they'll actually put tal uh, you know, baby powder, talcum powder in the mold itself, and that just kind of reduces that surface tension a little bit. It's kind of shake some in, move it around, and then dump it out mostly. Um, the one thing about that is I don't know if it actually causes something on the outside where if you were pulling, like a lot of times they'll do a lot of finish work. They'll paint and do all this stuff on the top of their castings. That's the one thing I don't know if it like, if there's this layer of baby powder or if it, you know, if, it, if it's a problem in that case. I'm gonna kind of put some, I'm gonna kind of puff this thing a little bit. Whoa, there was a good one. I'm just gonna kind of spread it around in here. And we're just making this surface a little bit smoother, less, you know, no, not sticky basically. I'm gonna dump out, I have a little bit of excess in the bottom there. But it's definitely, you know, nice and slippery now. Let me try to wipe my hands off. I'm also gonna, I'm gonna kind of go over, uh, can you guys see, I'm kind of over here. I'm gonna go with the overhead view. 
to be able to kind of see what I'm doing. I'm just over the trash can doing the outside of this thing. I hope that my memory <laughs> is correct and this is what I saw people recommending. Definitely does seem like it's making, it's not, because this thing was kind of sticky, very friction, frictiony, frictionful. Um, brand new out of the box. So this is, this seems to be working pretty well. Feels like it anyway. Kind of smothering it all over the surface of this guy. All right, I think that, I do think that that will help a lot. Okay, so we got that fixed and ready to rock. I'm gonna close the lid of my baby powder so we don't turn this into a giant mess. <clears throat> Let's get some resin. So again, I have no clue. I, I'm sure that there's some way to calculate how much resin <laughs> this takes. I'd have no clue though. I'm just gonna kind of wing it. Um, so let's get to the casting view. Uh, yeah, I'm going to be doing some pen blanks super, and I'm going to do, we'll probably do like a brick, probably do a brick of, of pen blanks, and then I'm also going to do some stopper blanks. What I was saying is, because these little shapes, a lot of people were asking about this, you know, it's real neat that we got shapes, but if you put it into a pen blank, they're not going to be identifiable by the time you're done turning it and everything. So, um... So I wanted to do a few different things. I still think that these will probably be pretty interesting. Um, it'll leave some interesting um, shapes and stuff, patterns in the resin on pen blanks. So for the pen blanks, we're gonna do, we're gonna mix up a bunch of colors and we're not gonna worry about, you know, trying to see little sharks and stuff because there's no way. We're just not gonna be able to see that. Um, but with the stopper size thing or a handle type blank, what I'm thinking is, the outsides, you know, you are going to cut into them, but I'm hoping that you'll be able to kind of see some of these little guys in the middle of it. I'm not sure about that. So I thought it'd be kind of fun to do a few different kind of tests, just kind of see how do these things end up. Uh, let me, I got to go get some more gloves. Oh, and I also have some, we got the blanks from last week. For anybody that didn't see them on... Um, Instagram or the email newsletter. I'm gonna need to get more gloves again. Gee. Uh, so let's do that. So we already have the overhead view. I'm actually gonna get rid of this bottom part for a sec. I'm going to put our pastas back in here. We're not using them right now. Nope, oh, and I don't want to lose them. I don't want to lose my pastas. I finally got some snow last night. It's about time. And this has been kind of a, a dud winter. I got to go snowboarding yesterday. Missed the snow, but it was a pretty good day up there. Um, all right, so here's our blanks that we made last week. They turned out pretty wicked. I got really good um, suspension in the one and a half inch blank that we made. Remember, I, I, I held this one off. I think, uh, what? Let me look up the temperature. We waited till 115, 115 degrees using a Lumalite Clear Slow. We got really good suspension in the stoppers and then the pen blanks. I, I was pretty sure that these were going to be good, but I kind of have that down. That was 107 is when I poured these and we did 10 of them. So these guys are available on my website. And if you guys remember, I was looking at these when we were making them thinking, man, these really need some gold flex in them. And so I decided I had to see what they look like. And I love this pen blank. This is one of the best I think ever. Um, and I think actually, because this one's a little bit more packed, it may be a little bit better for, for the regular pens. I was saying that, you know, regular pens with the, the tubes and everything, 
Um, these are a little bit more difficult, but this type of thing. Um, but I think that this one with a white background would look really good with just the shamrocks. Probably the same with this one, but really happy. So all three of those guys, they're already available on my website. And I'll get a link here for you guys if you want to check them out. I'll try and remember to put a link in the show notes for everybody on the, the mold. And I already have a link to it. That's just a link to my, my um, short runs. And so all three of them, you'll see those are the first three. And I thought about it, and I, I want to give one of these guys away to somebody today. So that'll be at the end of the stream today. Um, we only made two, I only got two stoppers out, and one, somebody already bought one of them, so I don't want to give that away, because <laughs> I, th I think it actually might be gone. But I'm pretty sure we still have enough of the, the pen blanks with just the shamrocks. And then I'm actually going to turn that one. So one of these guys is up for grabs at the end of the show today, and I already got the thing set up. Okay, so let's see here. Let me just kind of eyeball this. I'm thinking that, hmm, I'm thinking that we could probably go with like, let's just do 100 grams of resin for this first pour. I think that ought to be enough. So let's go back to the, the double view. Let's see here. Russell, yeah, I ended up tossing mine. It, they got so bad that I was like, I don't have an hour to pick off every one of these little things. It's like 13 bucks or something for these. Figure well worth my money. All right, so what I'm going to try to do, there's a couple different ways to do this. And this is kind of, you know, if you need to like color match or if you're trying to get specific colors, um, you know, get a color wheel um, first, um, especially if you're trying to mix like very specific colors. But if all you're trying to do is kind of lighten a color, um, a lot of times you can just add white, like I could just add white powder to this um, brown and it would lighten it. But I think I'm going to try the yellow first and then if we need to lighten it, I'll, then I'll add some white. I don't know if this is going to work or not um, the way that I want it to, but you know, yellow and brown will give you a lighter kind of tan color, I think. So we got our, our cup zeroed. So I need 50 grams. We're going to be using Alumilite Clear Slow. I want to make sure everybody understands this. We are not using Amazing Clear Cast or any of those things. We're using Alumilite Clear Slow. And, uh, and this one, I feel confident that we can pull this mold out in about 30 minutes and it'll be hardened up enough for, for me to be able to crack the pressure pot. You, this, is not, this would not work with epoxies, slow setting things. Anything that needs like a demold time of like nine hours or more is this is not going to work. Um, uh, Alumilite Clear, the regular version, the seven minute working time, that one definitely you could pull in, in easily in 30 minutes. Um, but I think that will be okay. I would probably go with like an hour normally, 45 minutes to an hour. But because we're 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 rocking and rolling here, 51. Oops, 51. I I was I wasn't paying attention to what I was doing. So I, luckily I read that, 51, so we need 51 grams. So this is a one-to-one -one mixture by weight, um, and I had 51 of part A, I'm gonna put 51 of part B to make it equal. Talking and not paying attention to what I'm doing, jeez. 40, six. Hopefully, Will work out all right. Okay, 51, let's mix this up. Martian made it, what's up? We're just doing some experiments today. Finally got to get rid of your snow after six weeks. Oh man. See, I'm on the, I'm on the opposite end of that. Like just keep bringing it. I, w I wish winter was like, it would just snow every day pretty much up here. <laughs> Give me some snow to, man, yesterday was pretty cool. We hadn't had really in the, the resort that I went to, they, they got a couple inches overnight, but it was like non-existent, you know, like, or a couple days before. Um, but I actually found some powder stashes, like some reasonable powder stashes. I had to hike to find it, but it was pretty cool. Tell you what, powder on a snowboard, it's like you're just surfing on clouds. 
the best. It's also best if you crash. Powder's much better than, <laughs> than ice. So give me powder or give me death. All right, so let's try and put in... Um, I'm going to drop down to, I think I have a, I have a 16th in or 16th teaspoon little doohickey here. I want to not put too much in. I'm going to try like one to one and just see what happens. All right. So that's about a 16th there. I'm just going to, I'm just going to blow this out. I don't really recommend that, but it's quicker. You don't really want to be breathing any, any of these powders. So make sure if you do blow it out, blow it away from you. Let's put in some yellow. Um, and this was hot chocolate from P-Town Subby and Canary Yellow. Let's just see what that looks like. Pretty dark. It definitely lightened it from the, the hot chocolate. So now at this point, I think what I want to do is let's put in some white. Pearl. And actually, you know what I think we're going to do? Let's try this macro sparkle and just see. <laughs> we're, we may end up just burning this, uh, this test cup, but whatever. Because it's white, but it'll add a little chunkiness to this. So let's, let's just see what we get. So the white should hopefully lighten this. Now, my, macro sparkle is slightly different than typical micas. Yeah, that's just kind of making it glittery, but I do like the glitteriness. It's not bad. It's a little bit more like a diamond sparkle than like crackly. Sometimes you just got to experiment a little bit. So we're going to put these guys away. I'm going to pull out my, I have some white pearl somewhere. Should. Yeah. We got a little bit of caster's choice white pearl. So we're just having a little bit of fun with mica powders right now. Try some white. That should lighten this brown. I don't want to put any more yellow in. It's already kind of yellow. Already pretty yellow. That's... Uh, I don't know. Now it's kind of... Kind of took the color out of it. It's very white now. Try a little bit more canary yellow. This, like I said, we may have to dump this if this doesn't turn out the way that I would like. That's mm, okay. Still pretty kind of white. Let's add a little bit more of this yellow and then maybe a little bit more of the brown. I guess sand is kind of goldish. Probably could have gone with like a gold color. Let's add a little bit more of this chocolate here. Just a little bit. Yeah, that's not too bad. Not the worst. It's not the best, probably, but that could pass as like wet sand, I think. That's what we're going to say. That's what I'm going with. Wet sand with sparklies in it. What do you guys think? Okay, so. Wet sand with glittery sparkles. All right, so there's no real reason to wait around except, let me just see what temperature we're at. I just, I'm just kind of curious, 85. Actually, I think I am gonna wait uh, a little bit. The, the, the later that I pour this, the faster in the pressure pot, it's gonna actually harden up in a sense. Uh, hopefully that made sense. Like if you wait till the end of the working time, that means it's closer to solidifying fully, you know. 
So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to pour this. I would normally pour, like if I was trying to mix colors up, you know, two different colors, color swirls, I would wait till about 95 degrees or so right now. And the temperature in my shop, 68. So I think we're going to do that. The other thing about that is, you know, like if you mix this in the cup a little bit, right, you get these kind of patterning things. If you pour resinous, but this is, this is especially like a, a, a thing with slow setting resins, um, it's going to really flatten out, like even out. Um, you're not going to have that kind of where, where there's like a little bit of striation in the cup there. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's kind of, there's like darker bands. If you wait until the, the end of the working time and kind of give it a little bit of a mix, you know, that's going to kind of stay in there. For you so like for people that are doing resin river tables if you can kind of just give it a little mix that'll that'll make all those little particles just kind of move a little bit that's what's happening is the lights hitting the the, the uh, mica powder particles uh, slightly different but if you let it just sit there they, they all kind of just flatten out you know not necessarily sink they just all kind of are, are sh you know facing the same direction so you don't get as much of that kind of striation so hopefully that kind of made sense I don't know I'm just going to wait till 95. It will be good. I could even wait longer, but I want to move on to the next round of things. So we're at 91 right now. Yeah, Doug, well, which one was the latest of Doug's? Because that, um, I don't even know what it's called. The thing where he cut a bunch of slits in it, that was sweet. And then I just saw on Instagram a new, I don't even know, what did, what did you put in that, uh, Doug? What are, what are, what's cast in that thing? Like little cutoffs or something. It was pretty cool. Yeah, I don't know why you get put in timeout. <laughs> I'm not putting you in timeout. I don't think any of the other people are. 93.5. So we're just kind of waiting around a little bit. I'm going to get the pressure pot lid off. Get it all ready. Hmm. I don't know. I have a color wheel. Um, the problem is micas are a little bit different because I've already, I know how to get tan with dyes, but it didn't work out the same for the micas exactly. And color wheels, I don't know some some of the like very specific like tan. It may not really help you. All right, we're at ninety five. I'm just gonna pour this in here. Can you guys see? Yeah. see where we're at. I don't want to make too much, but I think that's, I think that's about good. So I'm just kind of curious where that puts us. I'm going to weigh this cup again. That didn't work at all. I think I like Yeah, I think I like that amount. I don't know if you guys can really see, but that ought to be pretty good. That'll give us plenty of room for ocean animals. Whoa. Actually, because I tipped it, what's going to happen is some of that brown is going to kind of leak up, and that's going to be on the outside. So I'm actually going to fill it above that. You kind of don't really want to rock that thing around. I want to have a nice crisp line, basically. I'm going to fill this in place. You might want to do this in place. Put it in the pressure pot and then, then fill um, so that you're not, you know, sloshing it around. If you're doing, you know, multiple layers, I don't really do this type of stuff very often, so <laughs> I'm learning as I go, too. All right, so we're, we're going to pressurize this. I'm just going to hit it 70 PSI and then this one, again, I don't, for normal things, I don't recommend doing this, but this is kind of a special case. Um, I'm just going to waste that because I don't want to do anything else with it. Um, I'm going to pull this in 30 minutes 
Um, it's a Lumilite Clear Slow. Typically, you would want to leave this stuff in for like two to four hours, but I have done testing and it is possible to pull it a little bit early. It just, it's not the best recommendation that I have. But in this case, we want to do multiple layers. So we're going to pull it and then we're going to do our next layer in 30 minutes. So let me set a, a timer here real quick. Um, I'm going to set this, it's, uh, it's for 40 minutes. Let's just see where we're at when, when we get that. So if there's 10 minutes left, I know that I've hit 30 minutes, all right? Okay, so the next thing that we want to do is, let's see here. Uh, oh, the copycat bowl, bowl. Oh, you know what may put you in timeout actually is if you're chatting like constantly, if you do, if you're like this and then this, and then you're constantly doing lots of chats like that, that might also do it. And that might be like an automatic thing that YouTube does. All right, so let's get a mold. I'm gonna go hit this with a little bit of stoner mold release. Over in the corner here. All right, now the, for the pen blanks, I should have got this thing ready earlier. I should have put this in before we even started because I'm gonna have to wait now until that thing hits about 1.30. So in the meantime, if anybody wants to super chat, you can not only help support the show, but you can pick some colors. So with these pen blanks, what I'm thinking is we can go for all kinds of colors. So I'm thinking like, let's just say like three or four colors, because um, we're really not gonna see these shapes. It's not like in the end when we, you know, by the time you're done drilling out the center, you know, turning it down, cutting them into an individual pen blanks, and then you're, you're left with like a pretty thin piece of material, it's not like you're gonna see octopuses and stuff. Maybe you might see a couple if it was angled perfectly on the side, but for the most part, we're gonna cut into these and it's just gonna create weird patterns. So I say, let's go for lots of color around that. Um, for the stoppers that we're gonna do next, these I just wanna do transparent. Um, and so um, that'll be something different because I wanna see if we can actually see the real shapes on the inside with you know stoppers and things like that or handles that you know i this is my two inch mold and it's kind of you can usually either get three bottle stopper blanks out of this or like a handle and with something like that you're going to leave it intact right and so you should maybe hopefully be able to actually see some of the shapes in the inside even after you've turned it that's that's going to be what we're going to see we'll see if it works that way or not uh, let's see here Super is too talkative. No, I'm just like repeatedly, like, like I said, I don't know. I, I do remember there are some things where if, if, cause what, and the reason for that is that people go into some people's chats and then like completely take over the chat and where nobody can even see anything. Not saying that you're doing that, but you may just space it out, <laughs> you know, between chats that, that, I don't know. I have no clue what's going on though. I'm not paying attention too much. And wants a light blue. Thank you for the super chat. I appreciate it. So we got one color. Let's do, like I said, either three or four. Three or four colors in these. And I'm kind of also stalling because uh, we need to let the, the mold warm up. It'll take about, I don't know, 10 or 15 minutes. Um, one of the nice things also, you know, you, if you guys have your, your heat gun, you can just, you know, Check out what, what temperature your, your mold's at using this thing. Um, probably want to open the door first. Yeah. <laughs> um, so we're, right now my mold's at like 80. It's going to take a little bit of time. I like to get them up to about 130, 135, 140, something like that Fahrenheit. Um, that is the best I find. You, you don't get that kind of corner rounding, corner creep, I call it. Yeah, pen blanks. Frank, Amy's choice. What did Amy pick? Amy already picked one? I don't think I saw Amy pick one. 
Um, yeah, sometimes you can get things. So what, what I've found with, with casting things, so we've, I've been doing Dunkin' Junk for like six years or something like that. Well, realistically, I've been doing Dunkin' Junk type stuff since I started. Like that's what it all started as. I was experimenting with things. And so what I've actually found, um, and I think that, oh, Brian, nice. Five, so make sure to pick a color, uh, Brian. Um, what I found, and, th and it was very apparent, I, I, it, it all came clear um, when I did the little green army men. I cast some of those. And, you know, and wh what I've realized is if you're going to, like, make pen blanks or something like that, you're going to turn whatever you cast, um, then, you know, getting something that's super identifiable, like in real life, like you, you could identify a little green army man or, you know, little shark pastas, in real life, if you're holding the thing in your hand, but if you turn it and cut it, then all that you can expect is you're gonna you're gonna see slices of that, in you know, or even like curves in a sense. So, I don't think it's a really good idea if you're gonna make turning blanks to do very identifiable things. Um, if you're just gonna embed things in a in a superstructure in a sense, if you're making like cubes. Or things like that, you know, uh, dragon eggs where, you know, we, we, we did, just did a baby dragon where that's identifiable. If you were going to cut into that baby dragon, it would be all slaughtered and you wouldn't even know what it was in the end. So that's what I've kind of found is, is for, for turning blanks and things like pen blanks especially, um, it's fun to find things that, ha that create cool patterns um, by their cross section. That's always the best, I find. So, you know, pasta does work out pretty good. Pine cones do work out pretty good because they have an interesting pattern effect. So, let's see here. We got hot pink, baby. <laughs> nice. Uh, Brian wants coral. Uh, so, that's like a, you know, uh, coral. You know what I think a good coral might be? I don't have a specifically a coral color, but I think that phoenix orange... Uh, it'd be okay. Hmm, coral. Hmm. I don't have a coral. I think I think Phoenix Orange is going to be the closest I've got. It's pretty close. I'm going to switch camera views, so hopefully that'll work. I don't know if that's that co the actual color is going to show up very well, but that's that's about as close as I, I think we can get there. Phoenix orange. We got hot pink. Uh, I got a ton of pinks. Let's see here. The hottest pink that I know of, I would have to say, is probably going to be rose red. It's pretty hot, baby. <laughs> uh, another good one that's pretty much the same as that is, um, which I don't think I have any of. That's why I picked this. Um, what's it called? Vibrant pink in Caster's Choice is another good one. Ooh, that's a good idea. Good call, Doug. We're going to go with Doug's idea. We're going to put some macro pearl in there. Um, let me get that out so I don't forget. Macro sparkle. It's sparkly. Okay, so we got those two. Um, a light blue. Let's see here. We got aqua blue. We got Carolina blue and we got turquoise. I really like that turquoise color. Uh, is there any other interesting light blues? Brilliant blue is one of my faves as well. So you got choices here. So we got brilliant blue. That's kind of a vibrant light blue. I would kind of call it. We got turquoise, which is, you know, tur like an aqua turquoise kind of thing. Teal, maybe, sort of. We got Carolina blue, which is like, eh, sort of light blue. It's, it's, it's kind of a gray blue, almost. And then we got aqua blue. It's kind of like paradise blue, caster's choice, I would say. Maybe a little slightly different. We'll, have to, we'll let you pick one of those colors, Anne. And Amy, antique gold. Sweet. We got some antique gold here somewhere. There it is. That'll be fun. Okay, so we're just waiting on Anne to pick, a, pick one of the blues. 
Got lots of blues. Um, and I guess, technically, we also have... I mean, we could also even go with dyes. Lagoon blue is always a good one from uh, Divine. Is that what's the conch color? Oh yeah, conch, conch aqua. That's right. That's not really blue. Oh, and there's also powder blue from Divine. So we <laughs> aqua blue. So I'm making it even harder. So I'll just put that there for now, um, unless you wanted one of the solid color dyes. Put all these guys back. Okay. Put all that stuff back. Let me get a drink. Okay. Put that away. Let's, I'm going to check my temp on my mold. That probably is about good. We're at like 199.95. So I think it should be, by the time we get done messing with all this stuff, getting everything ready, we should be good to go. All right, so we need uh, 540 grams. First off, let me get my little notebook out here. Got all of our colors. Got our colors. Got my pen. Okay, so today is 310. Um, so I'm actually going to, I forgot to write some notes on the pyramid. So let me write some notes on that. The first pour we did a mix of chocolate. Is it, what's it called? Hot chocolate. Canary. Macro sparkle and white pearl in various stuff. I'm just gonna have to go back to the video if I want to recreate that. Uh, and we did about I'm gonna call that about 80 grams is what actually went in there. It's an estimate. <clears throat> All right, so we got that one. So our pin blanks. We're going to use slow set clear again. And that one's going to take 540 grams and we got four colors. Let's just do them evenly here. Oops. Oopsies. What do we got going on here? So 135 grams in each one for each color. And we're doing light blue going to be aqua blue unless I mean it's just light blue aqua blue e town and we'll do about half teaspoon I'm going to do coral hopefully this will work so we're going to use phoenix orange and macro sparkle I'm going to go kind of, I'm going to do this lightly. I'm just going to add a little bit and see where, it, what, what happens to this um, kind of work, you know, sneak up on it type thing. But I'm going to put a half teaspoon of Phoenix orange. And then we'll just use some little scoops of the macro pearl to get it to where we want. And then we want hot pink. We're going to use Rose Red from P-Town. Half teaspoon. And Antique Gold. Half teaspoon. So we're going to mix up 540 grams. That's 270 times 2. I'm just going to mix it all in a big cup and then dump off 135 grams into... Let's see here. Let me get some more cups. I am going to actually go get some other types of cups. Get some bigger ones here and let me get a I guess we'll just go with one. All right. Let's get 
get everything filled up here. Let me, I'm going to switch to the other view. You can kind of see what I'm doing. So I got a big cup here. Get that thing zeroed out. Over here. Okay. <laughs> you do have to sneak up, I'm telling you. Sneak up on those colors. Okay. So I think we're ready to rock here. Uh, we got enough resin? Hopefully. Fine. Okay, 270, part A. Uh, one little note, guys, and this is only for people that, that use Alumilite white. Um, Alumilite is not, they don't have it right now, and, and the, the super cold, crazy weather in the south actually screwed up the supply. Um, so that stuff's kind of on hold, which I don't like because I use that a lot. Um, but th there's nothing they can do. It's, not, it's, not, it's just the, the raw materials needed are, are unavailable until... I guess, I guess the storm, I don't exactly know what happened somehow, but I think it has to do with the supply chain. Like, they can't get it moved, basically. Um, so that's kind of on a little bit of a delay if you're an Alumilite white user. And it's actually, it's, it's, well, yeah, I don't know. Now that I think about it, I don't think it's affecting the clear. It, it has to do with the urethane-based resins, the, the raw materials for urethanes, which Lumilite Clear is a urethane base, but I don't think that there's a backlog of that or anything. So just a little bit of a delay, just to let you guys know. Um, it's not, you just gotta be patient. Most people don't use it anyway, so. See where we're at here, 250, 260, 268, getting there, 269.5, <laughs> that ought to do it right there, no, a little bit more, hmm. There we go, 270. And let me, so again, we're gonna be casting our, our Ocean Friends pasta. That should be fun. Let me go get the other cups that I was, oh, actually I don't wanna use those cups. I'm gonna use these. There we go. Oh, I almost lost some cups. Woo! Saved the day. All right, so we got got our cups. I'm going to stir this up, scrape in the sides of the cup, the bottom of the cup, get all those part A's and part B's mixed together. There's one thing that I know for sure, you do not want to social distance your resin. You want to intermingle it. Get it nice and mixed up. All right, so we're going to put about 135 grams. I'm just going to wing it on this. It doesn't really matter if it's super perfect or not. I'm gonna get 135 grams in one cup and just kind of use that as a, something to, like a gauge basically. So we'll just put that there. Um, if you were going for super, you know, you're going for very specific color, 
um, combos using trying coming up with like um, custom color mixtures with dyes then you want to be way accurate but for mica powders it's really not that big of a deal if you're just putting one color in there especially okay so let's see here let me get my little quarter teaspoon doohickey out so we got some aqua blue and this is a quarter teaspoon did i say half yeah we're gonna put a half in i think right yeah that sounds like a good idea half teaspoon that this is a quarter teaspoon that i'm using two two scoops All right, so we'll put our two scoops of Phoenix Orange. This is a caster's choice color. I guess with this one, we are kind of trying to mix stuff up, but that's okay. It'll still be pretty close. I don't know that I'd be able to come up with like a super accurate um, recipe necessarily. Like I think you'd kind of have to sneak up on it like just about every time. We got our pink, what is this one? Rose Red, I think it's called. Rose Red from P-Town. And then Antique Gold is gonna go in the big guy. One, two. Okay, I'm gonna put that guy away. Put all these things out of my way. We need some macro pearl in a sec though. Okay, so I'm gonna start stirring this stuff in. There's gonna be some funky pen blanks right here. Pretty sweet. All Olivier, how's it going? From Belgium. Welcome to the stream. I'm glad you joined us. That's pretty cool. We almost visited Belgium last year. We went to Maker Central, not, not last year, the, the year before. We, were, we almost went through, through Belgium on our way. We were, we were debating what to do with a, a trip after we went to Birmingham. But we decided to just go straight. I, I, I always wanted to see the Matterhorn. And I thought we might go snowboarding, so we just decided to go straight there. But if we had more time and more money, we would have stopped in Belgium. And a lot of other places. <laughs> okay, so we did that. Let's uh, add a little bit of this macro sparkle to the mix here. I'm just going to do a little bit at a time. See what, what it does. Hopefully that was the right one, yeah. Definitely not enough. Add a little bit more. That's like kind of two small scoops. Now it's making it pearly. That's pretty cool. See? Subtle. Add a little bit of subtle sparkle. Add a little bit more in here. Ooh, that's looking pretty sweet. I'm going to say one more. One more small scoop, and I think I'm going to call it quits. Yeah, this macro sparkle or macro pearl, I don't know if there's like a, a huge difference between the brands. It's probably the same thing. Uh, but that, it really makes some cool looking 
I don't know, effects and things. Adds a little bit of pop. It's a cool one to add to just dye. You can really get that kind of uh, uh, diamond dust look with it. Definitely pick some up. They, they got both, both brands, whichever brand you want from it, over at Turner's Warehouse. So I think I'm guessing that this stuff is probably just about ready to pour actually. 89, getting pretty close. And I think my mold's probably plenty good. It's about 127, good enough. Let's get that out. I'm just gonna make sure all of my mica powder is nice and mixed in. We don't want little blobs of it sitting at the bottom. I think I'm going to actually dump the little things in. Sometimes I'm a little hesitant um, because there's lots of little crevices and stuff, but I think we're actually just going to dump this stuff in right now. Let me, let me, let me get on camera so you guys can see the action. So we're, I'm just going to pour some in. I'm going to go for a lot of them. That ought to probably be enough, eh, just in case. There we go. <clears throat> so we're at 93. I, in this case, I think I'm actually going to pour a little bit earlier than normal. 93 is pretty close. I would normally kind of pour at about 95. But... I want to make sure that this stuff's a little bit, I want to pour it when it's a little bit thinner. So that it kind of flows into all those little crevices in the pastas. Pressure pot will help kind of remove air bubbles and let this stuff settle a little bit more. Keep that in mind. It will help out. But if there are any air pockets, the, the pressure pot can't fix a pocket where there's just a void. So kind of keep that in mind too. Um, sometimes I'll, I'll end up pushing things down into the resin after I've poured it if that's going to happen, if it's something where there's going to be voids in the end. I think we'll be okay with this stuff. We'll have to see. These are pretty thick uh, blanks. We're already well past an inch. I'm just going to kind of pour a little bit more on here. I think that's it. I think we're done. Uh, but I got to get my thing out. Okay, so let's see here. Our timer's at 11 minutes, which means that we're just about 30 minutes in. I'm going to let it kind of sit for a little bit longer uh, for, the, for uh, the pyramid one. Um, I think we'll go into the, we'll do the stoppers next. And then we'll definitely have, you know, given it enough time. I just wanted to make sure that we got both pours done, <laughs> you know, today on this episode or whatever, the stream. Let me, let me get this thing pressurized before I start cleaning up. All right, so I like to clean off my stick. All 
That way it's ready to rock for the next time. Okay. All right, so that one's in there. So this one I would leave in about two hours or so. It'll be ready. We won't see it today. But I'll post pics when we get them pulled. All right, so the next ones. Um, so I'm, there's a couple things that I'm thinking here. Um... One thing that I've never tried to do is actually see if I can get these things suspended. I think let's, let's, let's kind of mix things up. Originally I was going to use that two inch square mold and then just, you know, pour the things in the way that we just did it and then, you know, pour, pour resin over it. But looking at, at how that looked, all the, all the pasta in there, that's going to that's going to be very difficult to see specific little characters, you know, the little guys. So, why don't we try to suspend them? I have a feeling they're not they're going to sink. Uh, I think that they may be just just too heavy. Um but let's let's just give it a shot and see uh if, if we can get these things to kind of suspend throughout a pipe. It'll be the same type of thing. It's a handle or stopper blank. Um and so on this one, what, what I want to do is we'll just go with an aqua blue, you know, an ocean blue um, dye. It's not going to make it opaque at all. It's going to be completely see-through. Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to really push the limits on when we pour or, or you know, like when, when we pour, um, dump the little guys in there. Um, trying to think here how this is going to work. If you're trying to suspend things, like we, we just did the, the shamrocks. And I was saying that if you're going to try and suspend things, you're much better off pouring them vertically. That way you have a lot more space for the stuff to kind of move a little bit on you. It's, it's almost impossible to get stuff to just sit and, and not move at all. Um, so if it has a long way to travel, then it's not all just going to bunch on the bottom. If we were trying to suspend it, pouring a, a horizontal mold, it only has two inches, right? And, and so, and you're pouring a lot of that stuff on, it's most likely just going to fall to the bottom. So let's get a two inch PVC pipe out. I think I got one somewhere. I have a long one. It'd be even better if I had a really long one. That would be way cooler. Um, and I think what we're going to do is a couple of them. Um, we're not going to just do one pipe. We're going to do one where we're waiting forever um, before we dump the little animal guys, the little pastas in. Um, and then another one, we're just going to dump some pastas in and see what it looks like. But I thought I had another longer 2-inch PVC pipe. Let's see here. Let me get down. One and a half or two. One and a half will work too. As well, in addition to... Uh, it's a one and a half. Hmm. I sworn I had a longer... Hold on, I think I, I do have a longer one. I've got, I've got molds and pipes and things hidden all over the place. Let's see what we got in here. That's not too bad. Still go for a little bit taller, but... Let's see. Got all these things kind of nested in each other. So there may be... Ooh, there's a... There's a tall one. There we go. That's what I was looking for. Thought I had something that was a little taller. Okay. <clears throat> Now I got to fit all this stuff back in here. All right, so we're going to go for two of these guys. Where's my other two inch plug? There we go. Okay.
Okay. So we got a couple pipes. I'm much less of a mess than you. Well, yeah, but I also, I really try to keep things where they're supposed to be so that I'm not doing that. I don't know. Shop organization is a constant battle. Cannot let your guard down or it will take over. All right, so I'm gonna look, I'm, I'm inspecting the inside of this. Uh, this pipe, the inside is pretty nasty. One thing to note, uh, whatever the, the sides of your mold, however that surface is, um, that's what you're gonna get on the outside of your, your casting. And that thing has seen better days, which means what, it's not a big deal because if we're, we're making turning blanks out of these, but you're also not really gonna be able to see in there at all. So let me get a different, this one's much better. It's much cleaner and smoother in there. Um, that's gonna work a lot better. I wanna be able to see what's going on on the inside. So now let me inspect this. I don't want a bunch of crud and, and little dust particles and debris on the inside of this because we're going for a very, like a, a totally transparent blank. So for anything that's clear or totally see-through, uh, make sure there's no little particles that can break off and get into your, your resin. Um, and another thing you can do is just blow it out. I think I'm actually going to do that. This one is actually pretty good. So I'm just going to go over and blow these off. Another thing I'm going to do is blow off the, the silicone things just to make sure there's no glitter chunks or dust particles or any of that stuff. And get in the resin. Even with your best efforts, you still may get some of that stuff in there. I mean, there's dust in the air, you know? So don't, don't feel bad if you get a little dust chunk, but I'll tell you what, that's, that is the problem with transparent and clear things. <laughs> if you get one little dust particle right in the middle of it, you're just like, ah, oh, why? So I'm gonna go off the camera real quick and spray these guys with mold release. Donor, mold release. Oh. One. We got two. And let's pop our plugs in. So you can get these plugs at Turner's Warehouse. I have links on my tools I use page on my website. Do these as well as while I get my clear PVC. Everybody, every time I post anything like a demolding video where I'm, I'm pulling things out of these, everyone's like, where did you get those pipes? <laughs> it's funny. Uh, I'm like, oh, just head over to my tools I use page. It's just PVC. So you can get those there. Um, so again, this one, I want the extra length and we are going to fill it with more resin, but what I'm hoping is that it will just give me more room for the little doohickeys to, you know, little pasta guys to kind of, you know, sink a little bit further, but not all just bunch up at the bottom. I don't know how this is going to go. <laughs> we'll, we'll see. I've never actually tried to suspend pasta. Luckily, most of these, they're, they're pretty small, you know, um, they're, they're not very big pastas, but I'll tell you what, they're a whole lot heavier than glitter and that stuff sinks like a rock. So um, this one, we're just gonna like fill basically. We're gonna, and I'm gonna do that right now actually. I'm just gonna dump a bunch of pasta in there. Um, I think what I'm gonna do is just to make it so I don't get it all over the place. I'm just dumping it in this cup. We're gonna switch views. You can kind of see what I'm doing. I'm just gonna Do a little bit more than that. Come on. Shoot, am I gonna have enough? Ooh. Hmm. The problem is, guys, we're running out of uh, Ocean Friends pastas and we still need to do a pyramid. So, here's the deal. We're gonna scrap this one because what I was going to do is just fill the whole thing. This one's going to be a lot less pasta. I'm just going to dribble a few guys in there so that they're kind of suspended. So, 
Fortunately, there's mold release on the outsides of this, but I'm gonna have to just burn it. It's, it's just, that's how it's gonna be. Okay, I don't think we should need much more than that. I was getting so excited all, and just throwing pasta left and right. And then I'm like, oh, we're gonna run out of pasta. I'm gonna leave that in the pressure pot until we actually need to, to do something with it. All right, so the game plan on this, we're just gonna mix up some resin, we're gonna add a little bit of blue dye to it, and then we're just gonna, um, we're gonna have to wait for, for quite a while. Like, we're gonna go for, so I waited on the, the shamrock stoppers till 115 degrees. I think in this case, we're gonna wait till like 130 or so and hope it's not like <laughs> solidified already. All right, so let me get my little book out. And and I think what we can do, let's see here, pin blanks. I got to got to go to a different side here. I think what we can do, this is going to take a long time. So I think what we can do is actually get the pyramid going while we're waiting on this stuff. And we're going to be using the same resin, so I'm going to mix it all up at once. All right, so it'll kind of get things all going at once. Doubling down on things. So we need a two inch PVC pipe. Let's see here, two, so one squared is one. 2.14 times. How tall is this? I'm seven. This point five five four. We need about three hundred grams or so in this, and then I have no clue how much that pyramid's going to take. Um, I'm sure that there's some sort of geometry that I could figure out to, <laughs> to figure out the area left in my part partial py pyramid, but. I'm gonna say that it's probably like, I think what we'll do is, so I can also alter the, the, the amount of resin that goes into that pyramid. Um, so I'm just trying to, things are going through my brain here real quick. So for anybody that hasn't, didn't see the first thing, we, I have one of those pyramid molds and we, we cast a little bit of what we're hoping will look kind of like sand, sort of. Um, it's uh, sort of like sand. We, we put a little bit of a cap on the pyramid and I pressurized it, and then we're going to do another layer, basically. But this is just going to be the ocean layer. Um, you know what would also be cool, actually, guys, is to put another layer on the bottom of that thing, which we're not going to have time to do today, but I'll probably do that later today. Um, so anyway, so what we're going to do is in the middle of that pyramid, we're going to make blue, and we're going to add all these little sea animals. The problem is, again, we kind of want to have them suspended, but that's going to be pretty risky. That's going to be a lot of resin to, to hope that we get little animals. So we're going to do it, but I'm just letting you know that all this stuff is a little bit on the riskier side, especially trying to do it all kind of at the same time. So I'm going to crack the pressure pot first. It's going to be a little bit loud. Um, Eating a sandwich. Nice. All right. So I'm going to put you guys on mute for a minute. I'm going to open this up. It'll be a little louder.
All right, sorry that took so long. You don't really want to just blow the pot and just let all the air rush out at once. It's going to change the temperature. It'll kind of cool things off, so you don't want to do that. It's best to let it kind of slowly clear out. Oh, that's not too bad. I think we did pretty good with the... At least the bottom part of this looks pretty good. That looks kind of like sand. Not bad. Let's see, what does the top look like? I don't know. I think we did pretty good with the sand color. All right, so what I've decided is I'm going to put... Uh, I'm going to mix up, I think... Well, now that I'm looking at this, I think we're going to... Hmm. I was going to put 500 grams. Looks like we did get a few bubbles on the surface, too. So one thing that you can also do is, is do the flame thing to kind of get rid of some bubbles. I don't think it's going to be a big deal. I don't think you're going to really see it, but um, probably better to kind of leave this a little bit longer um, and, and pour, you know, when you're doing these types of things, it's also kind of better to, to, even though we're pressurizing it, kind of try to eliminate, you know, minimize the, the air bubbles that are going into the mold in, in the beginning. Just, it all kind of works out a little bit better. Okay, so anyway, so what I was going to do was I was going to put 500 grams in here, but now I'm kind of looking at this like maybe a little bit much. <clears throat> so let's do 400 grams in the pyramid for our, our ocean. Hopefully that'll be, yeah, I think that'll be enough. I don't know. It's kind of all a learning thing. The nice thing about these pyramid molds is if you if you don't pour you don't have to fill the whole thing up to can to get a pyramid. It's going to be a pyramid no matter how much you fill it. So, I'm going to do about 400 grams. Hopefully that'll be a good ratio of resin and then at the end what I'm going to do is pour more um and try and kind of go for this kind of gold look. It actually just kind of looks gold. I mean, I probably could have just used gold <laughs> for the sand like a light gold, um, but I'm going to make like, like the, the ocean floor on the bottom. Um, so hopefully that will kind of, kind of work. I don't know how well the, the animals and things are going to actually suspend in this though. We are going to try and wait till the end. So we got 400 grams going in the pyramid. We got 300 grams going in this. So that's 700 total that we need to mix up. And then we're going to add a little bit of ocean blue dye. And don't forget guys, we got a pen blank to give away at the end here. We got one of uh, the shamrock blanks up for grabs at the end. All right, so let me get a big cup out. Let's mix up some 700 grams of resin and let's see what we can do. Again, we're gonna be waiting forever. We're gonna wait forever to pour this going to be nuts. Are you guys excited? Are you worried? I'm not sure how this is going to work. <laughs> um, but it'll be fun. All right, so zeroed that out. So we need 350. Is that right? 30? Yeah, I think so. Let me just double check my math. Oops. Yep, 350. Sorry, I was thinking two six. <laughs> Let's see where we're at here. 350, 340, getting closer. 46. Anne's excited. Sweet. 349. I'm excited. Like I said, though, I, I don't know if we're going to get this to work exactly the way we want. There's like a little speck of something that I need to get out of this mold. Luckily, I have some tweezers on hand. Get out of there. Okay. I don't want no specks. So I ended up going a little bit over. In this case, it doesn't make any difference. So I'm gonna add 350 
one, and I'm going to go 352, part B. Oh, we're on the wrong. Can't see what I'm doing. Now you can see. Ways to go. Dr. Resenstein. <laughs> nice. All right, Martian, have a good one. Thanks for stopping in. Getting close. All right, got our resin in there. And again, I'm gonna use ocean blue dye. Lumalite's ocean blue, this is totally see-through. Don't even need a lot, just a little bit. Save some pasta for supper. Uh, I don't think we're gonna be, I don't know, we'll have to see. Don't know how much is gonna be left though. I guess technically I'm not gonna be loading this entire thing up in, in the pyramid. We're trying to suspend a little bit of them in both of these, so I don't know. So I think what I'm going to do, uh, actually it'll work okay. Okay. I think I'm going to pour the resin into these molds first. What I was worried about is pouring into a PVC pipe, trying to shoot the gun at it and get a temperature, like it's, it's not going to work very well. But I think it'll be okay in the pyramid, maybe. Let, 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 me, let me think about this. Yeah, I, I think I want to pour it into the pyramid. What I'm going to do is I'm going to leave the rest in the cup so that I can kind of mix it up and, and keep an eye on the temperature. The way that I typically do, do the, the measurement, you know, the temperature measurements, I usually kind of mix it up in the cup. And so letting it just sit in a mold is not going to give me a very accurate temperature the way that I usually do it. I'm just trying to kind of think about how to make this kind of work a little bit better. I think I'm actually going to pour the resin into a different, a smaller cup so it's a little bit more like of a mass instead of like a thin cookie on the bottom of this. 300 grams in a big cup like this is really not that much. Like as, as a ball of mass, a little bit thinner. And that temperature will kind of be affected by that a little bit. It'll, it'll heat up slower in this cup compared to a smaller one. All right, so I think we got that mixed well. I'm just going to drop a drop in real quick, one drop. All we're trying to do is tint this. We don't need anything more than that. That might have even been a little bit more than I would normally do. Probably could have kind of snuck up on this a little bit more, but I think we'll be okay. I think it'll be okay. These alumilite dyes are, are very concentrated. They're not like, if you're used to using alcohol inks, totally opposite ends of the spectrum. Alcohol ink is like super diluted. And uh, no matter how much you dump in there, it's never really going to darken. But alumilite dyes are very concentrated. The nice thing is, you know, you only need a pinprick sometimes. Like I could have gotten away with a, like, you know, using a toothpick and just putting a little, you know, prick of it in there. So... <clears throat> All right, so I'm going to pour. Let's see how far we get on this. I'm more interested in the pyramid, so I've kind of screwed up my numbers somehow. I'd rather do this. So we're going to pour this in here. Oh, yeah, that's going to be cool. Okay. 
The rest I'm going to make as a base, sand color, like dirt color. I might go more like of a brown for the base rather than that kind of gold that we did on the top. That's supposed to sort of indicate, you know, be, be, be like sand in a sense. I'm going to have the same issue picking this thing up where it kind of rocks and rolls, but I'm okay with that. If we get a little bit of blue or you know, like it's kind of slightly different, that'll just be like the ocean floor moving, which I guess you could have, you know, I could have thought about that a little bit more on the top with the sand, but I don't know if that made any sense, but you know, you guys know what I'm talking about, right? All right, so I'm just going to dump this into this. And like I said, the reason I'm doing this is to keep like more kind of a thinner mass um, than, than just the kind of wider base of this, this big cup. So that the resin will hopefully heat up around the same um, time frame you know, as, as the, the pyramid. Okay, and when this is the right temperature, I'm gonna pour it into the PVC pipe. Then we got our little pasta, guys. All right, so now it's just a waiting game. Yeah, the, the blue's a little darker, it's okay. Oh, what am I doing? A little darker than I would have probably gone for, but. I just got so excited. I don't think it's going to be a problem, though. I think it's still going to look pretty cool. As long as we can get the little animals suspended, that would be, that would be a feat, I'm going to say. I don't know what my odds are, guys, but I do kind of think they're a little bit low on the pyramid. I'm, I'm just going to say to keep, to keep the little guys suspended. They may all kind of be hanging out on the beach <laughs> by the time we're done with this. So, I mean, I'm just going to call it a beach party if that's the case. It's fine. All right, so. I just want to make sure that we have all of these guys on... Because when this, when this uh, happens, we're going to have to kind of move a little bit fast, I think. Dang, there's another piece of... I must have something on me. I need to get that. All right. Probably have shavings on me from because I was turning something. Tough to keep all the little pieces out of your mold. Dust and debris. Okay. Don't see any more. So we're probably going to have to wait about 15 minutes or so here before we can pour this. Actually, what we can do, I think, is let me, let me just see what the timing's like on this. What temperature are we at now? 93, well. I think I'm going to come in and just pop these little bubbles here since we're kind of just sitting here waiting. Um, this type of a thing, um, I would probably go with like a slow setting epoxy for this and I would still pressurize it. Um, but that's what I would probably do typically. Um, but, but I didn't want to wait like, you know, obviously I wanted to do this today. Um, so the nice thing is Illumilite Clear Slow will let me do lots of pours kind of all at once, you know, back to back on the, sh on the stream. But I would probably go with, with something 
that's a slow setting where all, you know, it'll just kind of lay flat because all the bubbles will get out. Like you could just sit here and wait, you know, 20, 25 minutes, pop all the bubbles. And you probably, you don't even fully need a pressure pot um, even in this case. Uh, you know, if you're using something slow enough, like I'd probably go with the, the Lumalite's deep pour. That would be a pretty good one for, for something like this. If you're doing like layered pours and all that kind of stuff. People get pretty nuts with these pyramid things. Like I've seen some really amazing work on, on different YouTube videos. <laughs> you tear the shop towel. I'm telling you, uh, these little shop towels are great. I just, I pick one up and pour and you can wipe your cup. I do that a little bit more um, when I'm just making pen blanks. I go through a lot of them doing that. So again, we're going to try and wait for... We're going to go for, I don't know, we're going to try and wait till about 130 degrees Fahrenheit and then drop our little pastas in. I don't know if that, I don't even know if it's like frankly possible um, to get these to just suspend perfectly. They are a little bit heavy, you know, a lot heavier than like something like glitter or, you know, we'll have to kind of see what we can do, but you just never know. Just kind of waiting. <clears throat> Joker's here. Welcome. Caught us for the kind of <laughs> sit and look at the resin for a minute thing. I don't want to switch views or anything like that because I don't know. I don't know how long it's going to take to get 130. This stuff's already pretty thick. But at the same time, still pretty liquid, you know. I think we'll be okay going to about 130. Definitely not that worried about this one. I wonder what this shows me. So this, this is showing me 109, 108. But the thing is that the other problem with this one is that pyramid is probably still warm. So I think that temperature is not accurate at all. Well, maybe. This says 109. I take it back. 109.5. A little ways to go. Pretty thick. I'm just kind of curious. I'm going to put one of these guys in here right now and just see what happens. Kind of sinking like a rock. Wonder if he might. No, he's sinking. Sinking slowly though. Oh, there he goes. Oh, like a rock. I wish I had a camera. And he he kind of waited and waited, and then he just. I don't know how this is gonna work, guys. I'm gonna be honest. But we are waiting for. We're at about 114, maybe 115 now. Still got 15 degrees to go, so who knows? Getting pretty goopy. It gets pretty scary when it gets really thick, doesn't it, guys? You're like, oh, I don't know if this is going to work. Pyramid says it's 120. I'm thinking these boats definitely are going to sink like a rock. <laughs> They're pretty big. The little seahorses and the, the sharks, maybe not. Little octopus guy, he looks kind of heavy too. I don't know. Seahorse. He's pretty cool. Getting pretty goopy. Thick. That only says 123. Man, this, like I said, it gets, it gets nerve-wracking 
and it's this thick. 124. Oof. I'm gonna start sweating soon. The nice thing is I don't have to pour the pyramid really or anything. Ooh, that's that's pretty thick. I think I'm gonna pour this stuff in the into the pipe here now because it's it's getting pretty thick. I'll just monitor that temperature. Wish I had a little bit more resin. I didn't mix up enough. I'm not using the full length of our pipe here. Pyramids at 139 at red. So I'm gonna start dropping some of these little guys in and see what happens. I'm gonna put the boat in up and oh it fell over. Can't get it to stay up. Oh man, that's thick. Okay, I don't think that the stopper blanks are gonna be working very well, but we'll see about the pyramid. I wanna get that in the pressure pot now first because I'm more interested in making that one work. Lost my Hang there. Then I'll leave this in for probably a couple hours. I might pull it and do that bottom layer before I leave tonight. Whew. I don't know about the stoppers. <laughs> I think they might have some air bubbles in them too. Uh, I tried. It's pretty tough to do that kind of stuff. Pretty tough. I think the pyramid's going to be okay. I'm, I'm really not too sure about these stoppers. But I do think that they're going to be suspended because that stuff was thick. It was like... It was like, I don't know. Goopy, very goopy. We ended up having a little bit more pasta. So we'll do some more of that uh, next time. Uh, we'll, we'll get our results and see how they worked out. Might, might give the, the stoppers another go um, down the road. Because I kind of blew that one. I, I don't know. We'll have to see how that turned out. <laughs> but, uh, all right. So let's see here. What do we got? I know the anticipation. I'm telling you. Yeah, if you wait, if you wait too long, then it, it, it hardens. And, and, you know, even if you pressurize it, the bubbles are trapped in there. Um, again, you can kind of get away with a little bit more maybe. It's, hard, it's tough to tell. It's, it's tough to give advice on trying to um, suspend things like that. Because even if you used a super long open time resin, like let's say you use deep pour or something like that, or ACC plus or liquid diamonds or what, you know, whatever, um, you know, you could wait, you could pour it all perfect so that there's really no bubbles in it. Um, you know, it's, it's a long working time thing. All those bubbles would hopefully float out. And then like, even if you waited until it was like seriously thick, but, but you didn't need to move it or pressurize it necessarily. Um, and, and you would think you could just, you know, push the little things in, uh, and, and hold them there. But what ends up happening is if it gets too thick, then you start pushing things down in and air, as that stuff kind of opens up, air gets in there. And so you end up pushing air bubbles in anyway, even if you waited until it was super thick. So it's, it's a really difficult thing. Like really the best way to do it is try and suspend things some other way. Um, you know, if, if you're doing multiple pours um, and it's something that you're not going to be cutting into, you don't have to worry about a witness line, then, you know, 
embed them into half of the resin. Like that's probably, a, that would have been a smarter way to do this actually now that I think about this. Um, what I should have done and what I would do next time is I, it would be a very, um, a, a lot of pours is what I would do. Um, I would, I would pour just like a super thin amount of blue and then I would arrange a couple of little animal things or, you know, pastas. So pour in just a little bit of blue, let it harden, then come over, you know, once it's skinned over, like, like hardened, um, then come in and place a couple little things, pour another layer, let that harden. And then, put, you know, like, do you understand what I'm saying? Like kind of put, like going up in layers and arranging things that would work for this type of thing. Um, but if you're doing like a turning blank, you can't pour tons and tons of layers. Um, you're going to see every division line. Um, so once you sand into something like that or, or cut it, I don't care what resin you're using, you're going to see a witness line because it never, it doesn't actually like melt into itself. It's two separate layers. Um, but for something like a pyramid, I'm just going to pop it out of that mold and it's done. Like I don't have to touch it really. Um, in that case, you can do lots of layers and you don't really have to worry about it. I think it would, I think it would work. I, I'm not a hundred percent sure, but I think it would. So, uh, before you guys go, we got a giveaway. So let me get this giveaway rolling. Hopefully the chat bot will play fair today. Let's see here. Please working. Well, I no, I think the timing was pretty good for the pyramid actually. Um, one thing you might have noticed, though, is I, I'm like, okay, 1.30. Well, by the time I got done messing with stuff, it's not, it's not 1.30 anymore. It's like 1.50 or something. I don't know. There it is. So to get entered, just type into the, if you want the pen blank. Um, if you don't want this, then don't do any of this stuff. But we got one pen blank up for grabs, one of the shamrocks from last week. Um, so just type into the thing, just like Dominic and Jim did, exclamation raffle. And then you'll get a ticket. And so this is gonna go for, I believe, oh, actually I don't have a, a time limit. I think I took off the timer since it was kind of stupid. Uh, yeah, so there's no timer. So I'm, I'm just gonna wait and then I'll call kind of last call and then we'll close it up and pick a winner. So we'll let this go for a couple seconds here. <clears throat> I need a drink, I've been talking so much. Throat's dry. Uh, don't forget, guys, these blanks are available on my website as well. I need to make sure I didn't oversell them. <laughs> um, I, I, there's one extra, so this one was one of the inventories. But um, I think, I believe that there's one more stopper blank like this. Somebody bought one of them, I know. Um, and then I also did, I'm going to actually get the overhead camera going here. Like I said, I wanted to see these with gold flake in it. Oh, man. I'm digging these blanks. These ones are probably going to be, uh, I'll probably be making these like all year. I have a feeling they're going to be kind of popular. So uh, anyway, uh, to get those, there's a link down in the show notes. And here's a link for you guys in the chat. That's just to my short runs category. And all three of them are, are up first. I'm going to go in and I'm going to de deduct one of the. Probably did oversell them this up there so i'm pretty excited about the the ocean animals again thank you to ann for sending in the the pasta and we got lots of different ones she sent in a ton of stuff um, we got an easter one so obviously in, in, in uh, coming up soon i guess uh, we'll do the easter pastas we got some little sunflower ones these are little dog paws and dog bones and things um, and then she also sent in, these are going to be interesting. I'm not even sure what to do with these. They're like long strands of rainbow colored pasta things. I don't even know what to do with those, but they're pretty sweet. So big thank you to Ann for sending those guys in. I'll look at my orders really quick here, guys. I'm going to try and be sneaky about this. Okay, so we're while we're while we're bringing in the the entries for the pen, the pen blank i'm going to quickly edit this to 7 in stock and now i'm not overselling them and that's a good thing okay good to go and if if anybody's interested in that pyramid blank get a link to that too 
Um, they're pretty cool. Uh, and if, if you didn't hear me say it before, the, the nice thing about the pyramid blanks, um, you, you know, it looks like a really big mold, but you don't have to make gigantic pyramids. You can just fill it, you know, so much and you'll have a smaller pyramid. So you have any size pyramid in that one mold. Um, the one thing that I will say that uh, that, that people recommended, which I think did work. Um, you want to put some baby powder. Um, it, it's got a little silicone sleeve in there. That's what the mold, what you're pouring into, but that comes out, right? And then there's this plastic hard shell. Between the plastic shell and that silicone though, if you don't put a little bit of um, baby powder around it, it'll get stuck in there. It'd be really tough to, to demold or just, just to get the silicone thing out of the plastic thing. Not, and then once that's out, then it, the, the resin just comes off the, the silicone fine. But there's the link. Let's see here. Um, I don't, the thing is, I don't think that you could cook the pasta, Bill. It, it would just be soft and noodle. It just, I don't, it's not like it's gonna harden back up. Um, so I don't think that you can do that. Um, I've never tried, I guess, but I don't think it would work. All right, so make sure to get entered for the pen blank, exclamation mark raffle. Where's the pen blank? For one of the shamrock pen blanks. And I was a little bit harsh on these, um, saying that, like, you know, realistically, I think the best way to go for something like this is a diamond painting pen or a handle. Um, but you know, lots of people actually lots of, lots of my customers make pens, the tubed pen kits out of the autism blank. It's not like it's terrible or something like that. It's just, you have to realize that there's, there's just not, it's not super packed, densely packed with, with the glitter. So, um, so don't expect it to be, you know, densely packed by the time you've turned it down to a super thin piece. Um, but it works fine. Uh, uh, you just paint the inside of the blank real well. And I, I just, I would just use spray paint and just douse the heck out of it. Just, just drench it in there. And it, they, they work pretty good. So let's see here. Make sure that there's no more raffles. We got one, two. All right, so get your last call for entries into the giveaway. Last call, I'm gonna close it down in just a second. I know that there's a little bit of a delay for that announcement, so you'll have a couple seconds here, but I'm gonna go in pretty soon. Close it down. Yeah, it would be pretty cool to kind of bend that stuff. I was thinking that too at first, but I was like, I don't know if there's a way to do that. All right, I'm gonna close the entries. Entries are closed, guys. I'll wait for it to kind of show up on the screen there. While I'm doing that, I'm going to get another drink. Damn, my throat's dry. Ugh. There it is. Oh, Doug. <laughs> uh, you missed it, buddy. Sorry. <laughs> All right, I'm going to pick a winner. And the winner is, Brian was just saying, I think I got a ticket. And Brian is the winner. Congratulations. So uh, what I'm gonna need you to do, Brian, is head over to my website under the About tab in the, like, the menu. Uh, you can do this on your phone too, um, under the little hamburger thing that drops down. Under the About sign, there's a contact form. So just shoot me an email with your, your you know, contact information, your shipping address is what I need. And I'll get that thing sent out probably on Friday to you. So, congratulations. So a big thank you again to Anne for sending in the pasta. I cannot wait to see. I'm, I'm really excited about this pyramid because I'd never used it before. I, I keep, I, it's like I look at it on the shelf and I'm like, I don't know what to do for the first project. And I thought, hopefully this will work good. Um, so I'm excited to see how that goes. I think I may try, 
I think I'm gonna try to pour, what I was saying for anybody that didn't understand what I was doing, so we poured like kind of a tan color on the top, and then in the middle is blue with the, the little animals. And then what I wanna do is pour a base layer of rock, like the sea floor. Um, so I may go for a slightly darker, kind of a brownish gold or something like that, um, and then just kind of fill it in. And I'm thinking that we'll have kind of a nice, you know, like little ocean in the middle. It's like we got a little glimpse of the side cut of the ocean. So I think I might try to do that before I leave. I'm gonna leave it about six. So that'll give me, you know, about 50 minutes or so to kind of get things, get you know, let this kind of cook in the pressure pot, pull it out, pour that base layer, and then um, we're not going to see the results until Friday because I'm going snowboarding tomorrow because we got powder. Um, and it's my day off anyway, so I wouldn't be in the shop. So anyway, we'll get the results. I have no clue. We'll have to see how the stoppers turned out because I don't know. I'm thinking those were kind of a, a bust. Uh, but the pen blanks should be pretty wicked. Um, again, with those, it's it's kind of a totally different thing. We're just going to have to see what the the patterns that evolve once you've turned it and all that stuff. And we slammed in a bunch of colors, so they should be pretty wild. So anyway, guys, I appreciate you all joining the fun tonight, hanging out. Uh, make sure, to, if you didn't check it out already, I just posted the video of the baby dragon egg that I made. Um, so that's up on my site or up on my, my channel as well. So, so check that out. Share with friends, of course. Uh, don't forget to hit the like button, as always. Big thank you to all my super chatters. I appreciate you guys. And so I think, uh, I think that should be about it. So next Wednesday, we'll do something else. I'm not sure exactly what we'll do. We could do more pasta. That could be fun. Um, possibly depending on the results we get, it might actually be a good idea to do some more different pasta stuff, especially if we get good results. Maybe we'll do some of the sunflowers or the dog things or something. I'm not sure. So uh, we'll see. I'll let you guys know. Always follow me on Instagram and Facebook. I always kind of post during the day what we're going to do. Like uh, earlier in that day, I'll tell you guys what we're, we're going to do on the stream. So the next stream is Wednesday at 3 p.m. Pacific time next week. Should be pretty fun. I can't wait to see these results. I'll post the results this weekend on Instagram and Facebook. So anyway, guys, have a wonderful evening. A big thank you again to Ann for sending these guys in so we could play with them. And uh, yeah, so I guess I'll see you guys on the next live stream.